International Women's Day. It is therefore plausible to say South African women don't have much to celebrate. To answer that question, we're joined now by gender-based violence survivor, Josina Machel. Although her uh, gender-based violence story is across the border in Mozambique, but uh, it still resonates. Josina, thank you so much for making the time to talk to us today. Uh, for those who don't know your story, uh, please let's start there. Uh, in terms of uh, your personal experience of gender-based violence. Good morning. Good morning to the viewers. Um, thank you for having me today. Uh, well, I celebrate this day by continuing my work, my commitment to ensure that the rights and um, the needs of women who have been abused, victims and survivors, are respected and that there are processes in line to actually respond to those. I became a victim of gender-based violence in October 15, um, 2015, when uh, my then partner uh, abused me inside a car, gave me three big blows to my face, one of which then um, blinded me immediately at that point. Um, my experience goes further because they, I experienced the lack of attention and the lack of, um, of uh, hurry, let's put it like that, that many of us experience when we go to the first port of call, being either police and in my particular case, going to a hospital in which hours and hours faded away without having gotten the attention. Later on, when my documents disappear in the police and in the hospitals, I started again the journey of having to go up and down, ensuring that I could rebuild my story in order to take it to court. So my activism in this area started by experiencing in the skin what millions and millions of women in this continent actually go through when they are abused, when they report abuse, and when they want to take the, the, the case further. And so that's why I committed to the struggle. I committed to ensure that at least after me, there should not be many women experiencing gender-based violence and all the traumatic effect that comes with it afterwards. Would you say uh, the continent is more or less galvanized across communities, government, civil society, religious groupings, the judiciary and parliament to end the crisis of violence perpetrated by men against women? Unfortunately, it's too early to say that. Um, you know, very few countries in this continent even um, around only 22 countries have a policy on gender-based violence. The rest don't have it. And even in the countries where they have a policy, it's kind of a white paper lying somewhere because there are no mechanisms to actually reinforce all the rights and everything that are enshrined in these policies. So there is a lot of work to do. Yes, there are silos. We're even working in silos. You've got um, academia working and doing certain things. You then have um, MPs doing passing legislation, but it does not actually come down. We need one of the things that is urgently needed is the training of magistrates, of judges, and everybody in the criminal justice system to know how to deal with women who have been abused, um, to understand how to ask questions, how to interpret those questions, and of course, speak to the women in a way that does not increase second victimization. So there is a lot of work and it needs to be intricately connected in the way that we did, for example, when there was a fight against HIV AIDS. You knew the private sector came in with certain skills and with certain resources. The government came in with other resources and of course, civil society. That is the kind of combination that we need to galvanize custodians of culture, artists, um, nurses, doctors, criminal justice system, all of us need to be involved in this fight and not actually choose to just be an accomplice by not acting or by opting to be quiet. You say a lot of work still needs to be done, but 
just in terms of the green shoots, what social compacts have been put in place across society to fight the scourge? There has been, well, when we talk about South Africa, I would need to say that South Africa is way ahead of um, many other countries in this continent. But when we look at others, is what I was trying to tell you, is that um, there are many policies in place. Um, they still need to be, of course, um, um, improved because realities have changed. But um, otherwise, it's very fragmented from the point you've got the policies until you actually deliver the necessary care for the victims and the survivors of gender-based violence. And uh, just in terms of this day, how are you marking it? Are you uh, a part of any activities? Yes, um, as an organization, the Kufuka movement um, has a few, has a meeting actually with some women who recently became abused. So we go and we offer our services of counseling, explaining what needs to be done or what can be done. Um, but also just individually, I also have um, one engagement with uh, a significant bank um, to discuss actually the issue of gender-based violence, issues about women, leadership, um, activism, and of course, let's say women's participation, which is also part of leadership. Let's thank you so much for talking to us today and really commend the work that you're doing. Thanks once again, Josina uh, Michelle, speaking of her work, uh, not only as an activist, but also as a She's personally experienced gender-based violence and in the process lost one of her eyes. Quite a gruesome tale that is, but uh, there you have it.